Hello, my name is Comtich. I am your microcomputer teaching aide. See Janet and John. See the ball. Janet and John see the ball. Janet and John play with the ball. John, John, come here a sec. What have you seen? Something's going on in the head study. Oh, I can see lots of people in there. Give us the butchers. It could be where they are. It's a good place to keep them if you think about it. It's hard to see. It looks very dark in there. Hold a sec. Hold a sec. I can see somebody. It's that lady. What lady? The one that came early. The one we didn't know. She's speaking. What's she saying? Oh, I can't hear. But she's, she's getting quite carried away. Who else? can't see. Oh, they're all sitting down. I'll give you a leg up. Grab hold of the ledge. Uh, uh, who is it? Is it them? Um, no. Who? Oh, let me down. Who is it? Teachers. Nothing but teachers. The day after tomorrow, <laughs> We shall once again be opening the school gates to let in the youth of the nation with whose mental development that nation entrusts us. But when we do open those gates, we shall not be doing so as we have before, term after term, year after year, generation after generation. No, we shall not. The age is upon us, my friends, wherein the infallible memory, the infallible logic of an electronic binary mind can give knowledge and instruction to our children as never before. And what privileged children they are. I will now let Comtich speak to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> was that Comtich? No, it was not. Who said it then? Who said that? Uh, me, miss. Oh, watch your step, Mr. Rice. Will somebody plug it in, please? Uh, this plug, Elizabeth. Plug it in, Mr. Knox. Alan. Plug it in. Uh, settle down, everybody, and listen to Comtich. <laughs> Once ten is ten. Two tens are twenty. Three, Three tens, tens are thirty. <laughs> Four <laughs> tens are forty. Oh, sorry about that. Five. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> this is an introduction to Comtich. The Series E microcomputer teaching aid now being installed in your school. I am a Comtich terminal. And for your information, I am an interactive, millibyte instruction, CPU, multi language, large scale integration, wand capable, multi peripheral. Pokeable, <laughs> dynamic, <laughs> static, dual sectored, bus structured database. And I'm here to help you. Thank you for listening. And that is just a taste of the intelligence of this machine. The children are privileged to be taught by it, and we as teachers are privileged to be in the van of a revolution. But why is Comtich better than anything before? Listen again. Hello. How are you? I am Comtich. I am cheaper than humans. I am more patient with children than humans. I can instruct, drill, test, and assess pupils with an accuracy hitherto unknown. Thank you for listening. Bravo, Comtich! The new technology has fought and won in manufacturing and communications, and now it is fighting to win in education. And we shall win! So, ladies and gentlemen, with your programs at your fingertips, on to victory! Bravo, Elizabeth! Bravo! <laughs> Hold still. Hold still. I'll pick off the glass. Leave me alone. I'm only getting it off. 
Keep still, Elizabeth. I don't need your help, Mr. Knox. It's in your hair. And it's Alan. Please call me Alan. What sort of a school have I come to? Don't be mad at us. We are still learning. Learning how to break windows? Where is the headmaster? I've been here for three hours now and I've seen neither hide nor hair of him. Forget him. I'm head of maths. I am the one you should be looking to. Doubt! I've cut myself in your hair. Why should I look to you? Look, I'm bleeding. My thumb. Elizabeth, you should be looking to me because of all we've been through. I'm Alan, Elizabeth. Remember me? Alan. Oh, there you are, Miss Flood. I just wanted to apologise. Oh, oh, what are you doing in here, Mr Knox? Um, this is the lady teacher's cloakroom. Out! Out! This minute! Chop, chop! Poon another window's broken. Put up more hardwood. In a draft. Yeah. Never mind that it's an old window. Neo Gothic. Never mind Poon's concern. Yeah. Ah. Ah, it's a wing of an angel. Yeah. Ah, that's a foot with vines. And words. Words of light saying. Uh, oh, that bit's in Latin, but, uh, oh, so is that. Um, ah, a shoulder, and the sun, and half a tree. Oh, the colours. <laughs> yeah. Who is it? Me. Who's me? Me. Game time. No, it still is me. This is private, Headmaster. I told you to go. I'm sorry, but I seem to be still here. Yes, this is another shattered masterpiece of the glazier's art, uh, <laughs> Headmaster. What do you propose to do about it? Has Miss Service returned yet? She went to the EEC, you know, and I fear for her. There's no sixth form till she gets back. Yes, she's such a clever teacher. No, she's got the whole ruddy lot with her. It can only be for their good if Miss Service has taken them there. Greece is a fine place. It's where culture began. You know, pillars and things. And then there's Venice. Greece and Venice have nothing to do with it. She went to Brussels. She went to the EEC, you know, and I fear for her. Has she returned? I haven't seen her. I'm due to go soon, you see, and she is the only person I would ever wish to hand over to. You should be up there keeping order, stopping kids catapulting stones, not skulking down here, passing the time of day with me. They've all gone to lunch. You should be up there, sitting at the head of the table, acting like a headmaster. You... Hmm? What's that smell? Is there a smell? Smell of food. Hey, hey, what, what, what's my primus doing out? I was waiting for it to cool down before I put it back. What did you cook on it? A, a tin of something stew, I think. You'd taken all the labels off, so I had to eat quite a few peach slices first. Have you been in my cupboard? There's so much in there, I didn't think you'd mind. Even I don't use the food in this cupboard. The food in this cupboard is not to be used. Uh, there's a pot of tea on the go here. Help yourself. Oh, uh, that's my good pot! Milk? Sugar? Oh. Miss Service likes hers with lemon. How do you like yours? Quietly. Alone. I could only find one cup and so oh. it, It's your turn to use it. You're a headmaster, not a tea boy. Go up and be one. I am unable to set foot up there, not without the support of my beloved Miss Service. Computerised education was thrust upon us willy-nilly. But she, brave person that she is, has taken the whole weight of it upon her shoulders. And when she comes back, I shall happily let it rest there. Yes. Don't mind me. In my own place, while I put a few neo-Gothic windows back together, will you? Yeah. Yes. Thought not. Don't mind me. Uh, t tell me, McVeigh. Pooned. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, do you have any children? No girl of my acquaintance has ever written back to me, so I doubt it. Beg your pardon? It was a funny joke. Oh. Mm. I have a child. How nice. Uh, sweet, is it? 
No, she's 31. It's her birthday today, and she's pregnant. Not me, Governor. She's married to my head of maths. She's going to give birth to a child, McVeigh. Pooled. That will one day end up in a school like this, being taught by a computer. And my son-in-law. And do you know, McVeigh? Poon? Hmm? Yes, of course, Poon. Without Miss Service, I think I would dread that day. Hello. Oh, that was quick. You didn't even give me time to press the bell. Oh, it's you, Jack. Confirmed. I heard something. I thought it might be Alan. Well, I've not come to borrow your lounge floor again, if that's what you think. Merely to tender some chockies by way of rent for last night. Have you seen Alan? All day, dear heart. No, tonight. No, I'm afraid not. Has he gone AWOL? It's 7.30 and I haven't seen him since he left this morning with that massive hangover you gave him. I don't give hangovers. I made it by rounds now and again. He told me to make sure I was never left alone with you. So where is he? Oh, from what I gather when I left, he was doing something noble like working late. There seems to be an awful lot to get done with these computer thingies before term starts. <laughs> if you like that sort of thing. Not on my birthday! My, my, your birthday! Now, if I'd known I'd have passed over the chockies for a dozen red roses and a flagon of London Drive. I've got guests coming round any second and I don't know what to do with them. Alan promised he'd booked a table and I don't know where. And if we don't go out, I've got nothing in the house to feed them with. Oh, God! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Enie. Happy birthday to you. You're right! It is your birthday. I'm supposed to be happy. Everyone's happy on their birthday. Hello, Enie, love. Oh, hello, everybody. Come in. Enie, darling. Many happy returns. <laughs> and may you have lots more. It's 31, not 90. Oh, well, boys, <laughs> don't rub it in. And I was only saying. Um, this is Jack, a, a colleague of Alan's. Oh, hello, hello Jack. Jack. Hello, Jack. Hey, evening, each. Not one of the family as well, by any chance? Yeah, not that I've heard. Well, with the father headmaster and hubby head of maths, one begins to think she might be related to the whole school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, computers shaping up, are they? Taking over nicely, thank you. Oh, Patrick's company supplies them, you know. How splendid. Yes, isn't it? Um, go through, everybody, oh, please. Oh, thank you. Good oh, you know, Jack. Oh, help yourself to a drink. Oh, oh, God, there's only half an inch of sherry. Alan was going to pick some up on his way home. I'm beginning to see your problem. What makes you think he's working late? Well, he was still there when I left, and I left late, oh, ish. But Alan has never worked late in his life. See the school. See the lighted window. See Miss Flood and Mr. Knox. Are you still here, Mr. Knox? Alan! Uh, why have you stopped calling me Alan? Go away. Comtage and I have a lot of work to do. Hold, Comtage. Holding. Let me help you, please. You're not skilled enough to help. Well, I used to be your boss. You liked me then. I'm writing special programmes for the school office. I've done the training. Enough to continue doing your job and not mine as well. Stand by, Comtage. Standing by. We must talk about us, Elizabeth. Not now. I'm talking to Comtage. Later, maybe. Coming a bit dry-throated in there. I think perhaps you'd better announce the late arrival problem. I could kill him. Ah, oh, Dad should be here any minute. He's always around on my birthday and never fails to bring a bottle. Oh, so the head's expected too, is he? It is my birthday. Crafty old devil. We thought he was ill. He's never ill. Mrs. D was a shade and miffed to say the least when he didn't show at school today. Of course he was at school today. Fine. I went to his house to clean and if he wasn't there, he had to be at school. See the grey-haired man. See the hammock. The grey-haired man is asleep in the hammock. Headmaster? Headmaster? That is my hammock you're sleeping in? It's a plot. It has to be a plot. They are too embarrassed to acknowledge that I'm 31. They are, Jack. You have to admit it. Yeah, hands off, sweetie. Let's sort these out. They all look the same in the foil. Oh, it's smelling good. Mm. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. Bean sprouts all round. Oh, that MSG. What's MSG? <laughs> Monosodium glutamate. Oh, yeah. That's what makes it smell. Ow! They're hot. 
Who ordered the chicken with nuts and egg foo young? That's me. Thanks. Ow, it's hot. Beef chow mein, crispy noodles and a sachet of soy. I think I did. Or was that you, Patrick? No, mine was a spare ribs and special rice. <laughs> Pork balls for me Ooh. with sweet and sour sauce. Ah. <laughs> They're ashamed of my age. My family are ashamed of my age. Well, we're not, Eenie. Oh. You look lovely for your age. Nicholas. Yeah, now look, whoever wanted prawn crackers is out of luck. Oh. Polystyrene shortage or something. <laughs> oh, and they thought Peking duck was a rule in Maoist cricket. They're all Hong Kong there, you see. <laughs> oh, will somebody open me wine? Oh, hand oh, over, teacher. Please. It's Albanian spumante. It's all mm. I could get. <laughs> they say it goes very well. I am 31. I don't mind being 31. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I... I am 31. I am 31. 31. <laughs> Bravo! Oh, oh, booze at last. <laughs> oh, oh, it's an interesting <laughs> colour. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. yes. And her special day of the year. Yes. Oh. To Eenie. <laughs> Some special day it turned out to be. <laughs> At least it's different. Nicholas. Oh, he'll be home any time now, don't you fret. And we'll all have a jolly evening. Indeed we will. <laughs> <coughs> well. Uh, uh, pass the soy sauce, will you? Mm. Well. <laughs> You all right, old lad? So so. Well, uh, I think those noises mean Patrick is trying to find a subject of conversation. Mm. <laughs> wells. He's going to talk about wells. <laughs> Depthy subject that. You say something then, smart ass. I just did. Oh, boys, boys. A great raconteur, my husband. <laughs> it comes of being a computer man, doesn't it, darling? Mm. So, you're into computers in a big way. Oh yes, sir. Who isn't? Well, not you, for a start. Not in them, but I use them. De rigueur for entry into the educated classes. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Patrick's with Lemon. They have the contract for the education authority. And, let me tell you, you couldn't have done better than come to us. I'm glad we made such a clever decision. Oh, well, your grandmasters knew what they were on about, because uh, we lead the field. Oh, we really do. Uh, cat is our thing. Meow, then. <laughs> Computer-assisted teaching. Well, I thought it was cow. Computer-assisted learning. Well, strictly speaking, it should be. Yeah. But uh, when you try to sell the stuff, you need all the abbreviations. You can lay your hands on it. <laughs> cat sounds better than cow. In fact, computer-assisted knowledge is about the best descriptive phrase. But there's not a lot you can do with CAC. <laughs> ah, don't mock it. Computers can teach anything and teach it more effectively. This is my party. <laughs> so, what happens to the teachers? Let's talk about something I want to talk about. Well, those that are left will keep discipline. I mean, kids these days, anything that gives adults time to drum respect into them has got to be a good idea. My glass is empty again. In other words, computers will help children to conform to what society expects of them. What's so wrong with that? Hear, hear. Less vandalism for a start. I want to talk about knitted booties. Yeah, graffiti, broken windows, oh. mugging. Or maternity dresses that make you look 21. Indoctrinating a sea of spotty mental dwarves into thinking the silicone chips god. Huh. Rows and rows of plastic boxes where each kid can learn how to become identical to every other kid. It won't be like that. It'll work. If it works, it'll be because people don't like each other very much. They'd rather talk to machines. And what if they're twins? Yeah. They are fun, all these games and things. We're giving Eenie a, what's it, for a birthday, the size of a wristwatch. Plays croquet with you. Oh, you'll love it, Eenie. It's got little electronic balls. <laughs> <laughs> Alan? Alan, is that you? Uh, what's going on in here? My birthday party, remember? I'm a year older and wider by the minute. Where have you been? Come on, Alan, own up. Nicholas. I've been to see the future. Bravo. And she's lovely. There's a light at the end of the passage. Somebody's still here. It could be them. Better take off our shoes. Mine creak. OK, but hurry up and carry them. Ever heard of anybody being on a mission and left shoes lying around? I wasn't going to. Come on, then. 
Wait, did you see that film on the box? They were creeping down a passage, just like us. Big deal. Follow me. What happened? Where? In the film. Oh, Mum turned over for Val Dunigan. Can you see anything yet? It's our classroom. Well, let's have a look. Careful, this could be the prison. They always are. Wow, will you get a load of this? It's like a spaceship. Can you play games on these things? There are hundreds of them. How do you make them work? Go on, press the button. Any button you see. Wait, this one's got a light on. So is this one. And this. Hello, my name is Comptich. I am your microcomputer teaching aide. Oh my god, John, this one's alive! What is your name? Oh, John! Hello! Janet, this one's at my it too! Comptage. Hello! I am my your name microcomputer is oh, Stop Hello. them! Stop them! What is your Hello. name? Hello. Please enter the Take off, quick! That was from the way we turned them on! Hello, my name is Comptage. Ah, cool, <laughs> Don't do that, whoever you are. Oh, it's you, Miss Flat. Then you have the advantage. <sighs> What's well, Poon? Don't you recognise me? You have your torch in my face. I thought I had a window smasher in my grasp. School is supposed to be locked at night. I have a key. She has a key. Nobody tells Poon, do they? So it's your light down the corridor, then? It's my light. If people are going to work late, they should let me know. Well, you know now. That's a funny joke. It blimey. Classrooms were never like this in my day. No blackboards, no chalk, just thousands of telly screens. Is that all they are to you, telly screens? <laughs> you wouldn't have the imagination. Oh, another funny joke. Yeah, you've won. You know how to work these things. I don't. That puts me at a disadvantage. It's a question of survival. Yeah, survival, that's the business. You've a job. Don't complain. Yeah, I am 43. And this is my third career. And all because I was skilled, you see. Not modern skill, traditional skill. So my job's kept on going out the door. Then get yourself a modern skill. Oh, no fear, because anything a person can do to a computer today, a computer can do to a computer tomorrow. <laughs> ah, the way I see it, to have a future, it's best not to have any skills at all. Now, if you want to do your job properly, then teach the kids how to be unskilled. That way they'll earn a living, because computers can't clean the lavies or empty the bins. Eh? I am going to be as completely unskilled as I can. For no matter what they do to the world, people will always throw out rubbish and people will always need the crap. <laughs> Who the hell? Hey, hey, come back! Hey, hey, what have you got against my windows? Where is this horrible place? It's so dark. I don't know. Boiler room, I think. When you come look in here... You suggest a better place. I've never been in here before, and I'd rather I wasn't now. Do you think this is what hell looks like? Sounds as though we've lost him. I don't like being in hell. We've got to stay until we know it's safe. It could be safe in here. Safe from what? <gasps> There's somebody in here, John. Uh, who's that? Is it the devil? D uh, don't run off. I know you too, don't I? It is the devil. We've done nothing wrong. Honest. So you often dash around the school out of term and in the middle of the night? It's Rip! Hmm? Uh, are you going to call the police? Uh, to tell the truth, I'm not supposed to really to be here either. At least not in Mr Poon's boiler room. But it's your school. Whatever gave you that idea? Uh, you won't call the police, will you, sir? Even if I did call you the devil. You also called me Rip. Rip Van Winkle. Uh, only a nickname, sir. I have always wondered why that particular one. Um, because, um, because... Because uh... you fall asleep in prayer, sir. Oh, dear me. Uh, I suppose it's possible. Do you know where they are? You better own up. Where who are? My sister and his brother. We know you've got them somewhere. I'm glad you've told me, otherwise I wouldn't have known. They went on a trip and missed service to Brussels or somewhere. Deadly dull, but they still went. Cost a bloody fortune, Mum said. We haven't seen them since. So you imagine we have them locked up here? You might have moved them by now. And it's all because of the computers. The computers? Yes, it's their fault. I heard my dad saying it. And there was talk of it all last term, so he knew it was true. What was it that you knew was true? 
He said you were going to get rid of the sixth form. Ah, now that is true. Perhaps it's us that should call the police. You think there has been a mass killing somewhere of all A-level candidates? What have you done with my sister? And my brother? They are in the excellent hands of Miss Service. Miss Service is a very capable woman. Before too long, she will be doing the job that I do. It is not a job you should ever envy. But in terms of your future, she will do it far better than I. But what's she doing to my brother? My folks are going apeshit. Uh, won't they be going even more ape, uh, whatever, to find you are not tucked up in bed? We're not going home until we've found them. Until our mission is completed. Aha, you are on a mission, a very secret mission. We were doing all right until people started to catch us. That can be the trouble with missions. Someone's breaking windows and they think it's us. Are you on a mission, sir? I couldn't call it a mission anymore. Then why are you hiding? Don't speak to him. Don't talk to the enemy. I'm sorry you should consider me the enemy. You are. You've got rid of my brother and her sister. You've got rid of the whole sixth form. To get rid of the sixth form, one has to commit certain acts. What it doesn't entail is kidnapping, incarceration, and even simple murder. Higher education is at home now. The little computer you use for games and your parents use for... Whatever your parents use computers for. Games. Uh, well, those same computers will teach your big brother and your big sister how to get into university. We just give them programs. I believe you. You gave my brother and the others to the grin. Hmm? Uh, I mean, Miss Service. To take them somewhere and lose them. Uh, I think it's time you went home now. We're staying until we find them. All night, if necessary. Hmm. It's quite nice when your eyes get used to it. There's comfy chairs and tables. And food. Tins and tins of food. Can we have some? I'm starving. I don't trust him. Uh, for some reason, Mr Poon has certainly been diligent in stocking his cupboard. I'm famished, John. Let's stay. I don't trust anyone in this place. I bet he's poisoned it. Of course he hasn't. Don't be stupid. It's in tin, silly. I'm going to if you're not. Well, maybe we could. But only if the coast is clear. I'm going to go and check. <laughs> so, uh, madam, uh, let me offer you some tempting morsels to tickle your palate. Are you going to be the waiter, sir? If madam would care to take her place at the table, dinner will be served. Sir, I'm getting pains. I haven't eaten for a hundred years. Uh, Madame looks remarkably well on her centenary. What's on the menu? Rissol de viande and haricot au gratin, madame. Will you what? Burgers and beans. The cupboard is full of them. I'm afraid the food is cold. Mr Poon locked away his primus. But when you're on a mission, you must take food how you find it. No eating! I haven't started yet! They're heading this way. We're off! But I'd be very grateful if you didn't mention that you had seen me. I'd be very grateful. Uh, hello? Elizabeth? It's Alan, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, it's Alan. You there? Who is it? Hello. Oh, you. Are you late or are you early? I tried to call you. If it's last night, you're too late. And if it's this morning, you're too early. Something cropped up and then it was too late. And now you're too early. Please, let me in. If you want to see me, see me at school. I brought the car. I could give you a lift. I'm dressing. Oh, then hold everything and let me in. If you want to wait for me, you can. Yes. In the car. Howdy doody! Mr. Bliss! Headmaster! It's Jack Routh, are you in? Oh, Max, are you going to be all morning at that? Headmaster! Your Highness, the coach awaits! Look, I'm sorry there are no postillions, we came through a thunderstorm. Perhaps he didn't order a taxi. I'm to be your footman, sire! Her all-time greatness, Madam D, commanded that I stop by on my way to school to make sure you came too. 
Ow! Look! I've got a taxi digitally clocking up the price of oil out here. And if I use it all by myself, I have to pay for it all by myself. In case you've forgotten, the whole new term starts tomorrow. Give up, mate. He's not in. An evening with the wife? It was her birthday. There was a dinner party. And you'd forgotten. I always knew I should be grateful you never popped a question to me. And seeing you put it right out of my mind. You never actually bothered to tell me you'd got married. I couldn't just mess around. She was the headmaster's daughter. You marrying Irene Bliss. I still can't believe it. Well, that's what happened. She was pregnant, I presume. Not at the time. You married Irene Bliss and she wasn't even pregnant. I told you. I couldn't mess around. Schema. Infiltrate the royal family and become heir apparent. Just head of maths. Very nice, too. It was a way to save my job. The heads of department weren't getting the boot. Unless the entire department got the chop. That's what happened at my school and the head of department went along with the rest of us. So, you came looking for me. <laughs> that is understandable. Looking for you? Yeah, I'm glad you did. You know, there were times when I missed you. Hold on, hold on. I didn't come to this school looking for you. You knew it was my school? I thought you'd left for Canada. That was only a six-month exchange. When I saw the appointment, I rang and checked and they said you'd gone to Canada. But for six months? I thought they meant for good. Hmm. Why are you stopping? All those old feelings, Elizabeth. Best forget them, Alan. They're welling up again. I came to this school to lead a revolution, and I shall not let you sidetrack me. You must feel something, too. I have closed my mind to it. I'm not talking about your mind. Ours was never a mind-type relationship. We were body people, you and I. I'm not into bodies anymore. I like things to be clinical. That is how the tomorrow I want will come. But there should still be a bond between us. Oh, we are the only ones in this school who really know about cat. And we have both survived the changeover. We are still in teaching. <laughs> it's not just your revolution. But I have already set up camp at Versailles. You have barely stormed the Bastille. But well, what about the feelings? The welling up? Save them for your wife. Where are you going? I think I'll catch a bus to school. <laughs> when did you last see a bus? I'll walk then. Elizabeth! Aha, uh -huh, Miss Flood. You walking away from your lift? Are you offering me another? If your purse is full, the meter keeps flashing the national debt at me. <sighs> that uh, wouldn't be the car belonging to our youthful head of maths back there. It might be. Run out of petrol, has it? No. Do you often take taxis when you can't pay for them? Ah, this morning I was on an errand for Mrs. Dooley. An unsuccessful one. Oh dear, you'll be sent to the headmaster. No, not this time. He was my errand. Oh, I'll probably have to stand in the corner till break. Will Mr. Bliss be granting us his presence today? Next question. Is he ill? Next question. It's ridiculous. There's so much I need to discuss with him. Yes, he's a very naughty boy. I say, it looks as though we are being followed. Hello, Noxie! Cooey! Mr. Routh, as you seem to be the only other person to know that Alan and I were once acquainted, I should be grateful if it stayed that way. Coachman, show those nags of yours the whip. How oh, grateful. Just grateful. Don't put your arm around me, please. Cooey, Noxy! <laughs> You're right, it wasn't petrol. I think he's overheating. Please take your arm away. If you kiss me, his wheels might just fall off. Oh, well. Be like that. Thank you. We're once acquainted. That's in the past tense, isn't it? Your grammar is very good. Well, I am head of English. But what are the present, Miss Flood? My present belongs to the computer lab, seeing that you people get things right. Well, marking is out of ten. Seeing that you don't balls up the system we experts have established for you. At such an early stage in total electronic education, it would be easy for ignoramuses or Luddites to upset the apple cart. I'm not a Luddite. But are you a believer? Well, I joined the party and I got armbands to prove it. Inflatable ones to keep me afloat. From what I understand of this place, all you've got above the surface are your backsides. <laughs> That's how we breathe. Hello? Hello? Oui? Oh, pardon? Miss 
Mr. McVeigh. You speaking to me, officer? Looks like it. Hello. I'll write it down. Let's do that, mind you, please. Uh, uh, ici, Madame Dooley, do... Uh, pardon? I understand you reported intruders on the premises last night. It's blood, please. Hello. And this is the latest deceased window. Oh, yes. oh la la. Yeah, uh, Quite a spot of general trouble you're having. Uh, no key to power. Oh, be quiet. No, no. You see, Madame Dooley, Dooley, yeah, called yeah, d'Angleterre. Yeah. Uh, oh, have you still got Mademoiselle service? A notre entire bloody sixth form, resté dans Motra Hotel. Oh, look at these machines. I fancy coming to school to watch telly all day. It wasn't like this when I was a lad. Be quiet. Pardon? No. Uh, have they sorted the hotel? Um, uh, Pourriez-vous parler a bit slower? Uh, a bit slower? His record stuck in a groove. Hello. My name is Comte. Bloody hell. I am your microcomputer teaching aide. Don't meddle with that equipment. I hardly touched it. What is your name? Please enter it now. What? Oh, I, I mean, pardon? Oh, we, we, mercy. Well, madam, what did he say? She's gone. Gone where? How should I know? I've already had untold calls from parents. They've even got my home number. And it could easily reverse Mr. Dooley's prostate again. Is that really the first time you've called the hotel? It is the first time we knew which hotel to call. Surely you knew where they were staying in Brussels? That wasn't Brussels, that was Paris. I thought they went to study the EEC. They did. The EEC isn't in Paris. I know it isn't. Oh God, how can I run this school single-handed? <laughs> so, the headmaster is still missing as well, is he? I don't think he likes computers very much. Oh, bloody marvels, though. <laughs> Not that I don't know about computers. There's little work in the force these days that doesn't need them. Can they arrest people? Well, no. Then your job's safe. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm an happy man. Sometimes I don't know what all the fuss is about. They leave people more room for their hobbies. It leaves some people more room to commit crime. Well... Crime's an hobby in a way. I mean, there aren't too many that can earn a living at it anymore. There are far too many of them. Oh, it must have been quite a window. That's my hobby. Buildings, architecture. Funny old school, this. Neo-Gothic and 1930s. Not Neo-Gothic. Yes, Neo-Gothic. No. Yes. No. Bloody yes. Bloody no. See the caretaker. See the policeman. The caretaker and the policeman are having a conversation. See the two school teachers. They are also having a conversation. There you are, you bastard. What the hell do you mean by cuddling Elizabeth Flood in a taxi when I'm doing the chasing? So you are the one with the horn. You've no right to bugger me around. Because of you, I really know something is wrong. I should have thought that was obvious last night. She's very uneasy. What? You mean she's making moves to go, go to mother's? You don't have Mother's number on you by any chance. I shall kick you into the middle of next year. Well, I hope we won't be teaching by then, so feel free. Elizabeth and I are on the same plane. We love the future. We love what it can bring. <laughs> you laugh at our machines. Oh, yes, I know you do. You laugh at them behind their terminals. But they'll get you for that, Jack and Ralph. You are subversive. You are against the new order of things. Elizabeth and me, come and us. We are the order of things now, and we'll get you. Good morning. I am the Comptitch Register Terminal. Please do not pass this point until you have entered your staff or pupil number. Yeah, uh, if you two gentlemen, Hakadim, don't mind heaving your bodies aside. I want to get this lot through. Oh, Niger, fellow, what is all that dancing iron work you're carrying? Well, there's a royal society for the protection of just about everything. National days for any of this and that. But does one of them give a thought to the protection of Poon's neo-gothic windows? No. That's down to Poon, isn't it? Uh, these are trampoline springs from the gym and I'm going to stretch them across every remaining stained glass window in my sight. The next time a stone is thrown, the thrower is going to get more than he bargained for. Please do not I... pass this point until you have entered your number. 
Is that light talking to me? There's a ray, Poon, you moron. It must have your number so it knows who has come to work. Yes, it's completely democratic, old boy. It's already asked the cat and a couple of sycamore wings. Well, I'm not going to give that anything of mine. Then it won't let you into the school. Then I shall gain entry via a shattered arch of a neo-gothic window frame. What is your name? Please enter it now. Hmm? Uh, my name? Please enter it now. Um, Headmaster. Hello, um, Headmaster. How are you? Please enter your syllabus code identification as shown on your learning access key. I've been trying to avoid you, you know. Please enter your syllabus code identification. How will children learn to communicate with others if all they do is listen to you? You will regulate them, make them efficient and clever. You will instruct them well, but will you give them understanding? Please recommend program advice. Uh, I suppose I'm a heretic because I do not like you very much. I prefer people and I don't want them squeezed into a mold that has already been cast for them by others who have taken it upon themselves to know what is best. <laughs> that sounds rich, doesn't it, coming from a headmaster? My school is suddenly infused with a new religion, a deity we must all revere for fear of being cast out and made excommunicate. I'm supposed to know what is best, but I do not. Oh, I made out that I did because that was expected of me, but come teach, I cannot do it any more. My one hope is that Miss Service will be a match for you. Who are you? What are you doing fiddling with Comtich? Mrs. Dooley, there's a strange man here. Headmaster? He's the headmaster. Uh, I apologize for my appearance, ladies. This suit has had to double as pyjamas for a night or two. Why haven't you been at school? Oh, I have, Mrs. Dooley. The invisible man, are you? Have you no idea of the importance and significance of the changes happening in your school? Some idea. You should be holding your head high with pride, leading your school into tomorrow. But I have to tell you that what has happened here since I arrived is not what I expected at all. Missing staff, broken windows, arrests. What arrests? Two children from this school, would you believe it? It's shameful. None of this will happen when Comtich is in charge. Which children? The police have arrested them for breaking the windows. The windows of their own school. They must be set free this instant. I don't see why, Headmaster. Because they are innocent. I doubt that very much. They were caught trespassing. They are innocent. And, and what makes you say that? I say that because I broke the windows. Look, I have the catapult to prove it. Come, come, Headmaster. You obviously haven't been sleeping well. Mr. Poon's hammock is perfectly comfortable. I found stones. I took them and I fired them. I want you to go and tell that to the police. If I tell them, they will not believe me. I will do nothing of the kind. The, the first window was an accident. I, I had confiscated the catapult last term and I was playing with it. But when I realized who was behind that window I had just broken, Me? I thought if I had a couple more goes, I could frighten you off. The man's mad. We have a lunatic for a headmaster. I've made sure that I will no longer be your headmaster. Stay away from me. I am only waiting for the return of Miss Service, and then she will take over. I inform the police that I shall be waiting for them in the boiler room. <laughs> Mr. Bliss, this is unconscionable behaviour. Come back this instant. Is it Mr. Elstead? Yes. Mrs. Hindermith, how do you do? You said if I came to school, I'd find jobs. Well, that's what the phone call said. The place is deserted. Nobody would think term started tomorrow. So where is John? Where is Janet? Well, you were the one who got the call. He just said if we came to school, we'd find them. Two of my children vanish in the space of one week, but I don't get a call. Two of mine vanish, too. But you got called. We got one lot back, only to find the others go missing. Who was it that called you? Didn't give a name. I don't care, as long as he told me where to find Janet. And John? It's been high time we met, Mr. Elstead. I agree, Mrs. Hindermith. I've been meaning to have words about the effect your Janet is having on my John. On the contrary, Mrs. Elstead, I do not consider your John a suitable friend for Janet. My, my child, child is, is above reproach. <gasps> Someone's coming. Uh, 
Oh, uh, excuse me. Not now, I haven't time. Mrs. Dooley, he's locked himself in. He's locked himself in my boiler room. I know, my down from the way. He's got no right. Uh, excuse me. You know, I should be on the inside, not him. It's my kingdom of one, not his. Stand aside. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Bliss? Headmaster? Excuse yeah, we had a me. Call. Shut up. Well, well really? really? This is Mrs. Dooley, headmaster. Open this door at once. At once, do you? Are you sure he's in there? Am I sure? He threw a tin of my Armageddon beans through one of my windows, and he says he did the others as well. Are the children free? There's no point in pretending you are the guilty one. It is a state impossible for headmasters to achieve. He broke one of my windows. I saw him. That was a gesture, Pooh, you stupid man. You have made a gesture, Headmaster. We all realise that. Everyone likes to make a gesture once in their lives. He's done another! Here, leave my windows alone! I want the children released now. I want the police here to arrest me. Headmaster, for the good of the school, it's best not to involve the police anymore. What will people think? No, 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 don't antagonise it, Mrs. Do. Excuse me? What is it? We are looking for our children. We want to have children. I've been on the phone night and day to embassies, hotels, police, mortuaries. We are doing all we can. Go home and wait for news. Not Kevin. Or Sheena. They're back. We want John. And Janet, my youngest. They're back, you say? Not John. Or Janet. But Kevin and Sheena, six former. Turned up this morning. There was Kevin, large as life. He's been having a great time. It wasn't quite what they got Nor for. what we coughed up goodly sums of our earned cash for. But if you'd seen Sheena's face like a Christmas tree, all lit up, well, you couldn't grumble, could you? Oh, listen, everybody. Miss Service has come home. Miss Service is back amongst us. She returned? No, Sheena didn't say anything about that. Nor Kevin. She waved them goodbye at the airport. Heathrow? No. Charles de Gaulle? No, Baghdad. That's where the money ran out. The embassy paid for their fares home. Miss Service went on. Miss Service went on? Where? What I want to know is, where is Janet? And John? I'm afraid there's been a, a bit of a misunderstanding. Have found village school. Stop. One blackboard. Two bits of chalk. Stop. No computers. Very hot. Like it here. Stop. Had decided to stay. Stop. Florence Service. That's all it says. Does that mean she's not coming back? It looks like it, old son. They didn't want to make me retire. They even asked me to stay on a little bit. But I've made sure they'll have to send me packing. It's all gone so wrong. Miss Service should have come back. She should have come back in time to take over. That was my plan. She should have been here to check on Miss Flood's machines. Only people who've done the training check on my machines. I had also wanted her to check on you. But my dear Miss Service has chosen other routes to her future. And she's scuppered you nicely, hasn't she, father-in-law? If only your precious daughter could see you now. What a pathetic sight. What a pathetic sight, and he thinks he's the moral one. Uh, he thinks he's the moral one. Look, why don't you both go play with your floppy disks? If you teach children by machines, how do you know they won't grow up knowing about nothing but machines? What about all the other intricacies of life? The future is for those who are going to live it. Mm, for those who are going to live it. Yes, I went there for a fortnight this summer, but the exchange rates weren't good. Technology provides strength. You are a pair of weaklings. A pair of weaklings. Stop repeating everything I say, Alan. Yes, Alan. Oh. Why are you repeating everything she says? <laughs> she started it. Oh, Irene, Miss Service has gone. She's run away. Irene? Uh, what are you doing here? I've come to take Dad home. Jack called me. Mm, Jack's a busybody. Uh, don't you want to take Alan home too? I'm not so sure. Come on, Dad. How do we teach children about a world that doesn't want to know them? Will they have a working week or a seven-day weekend? Those scientists, those bogus prophets, they would have us believe they have a vision of the future, but a scientist doesn't really think. He just deals in facts, the least important currency mankind ever invented. But he imagines his facts to equal reality. 
The more man celebrates his own supreme intelligence, the more he thieves his self-respect as a living being, and the more he deserves to die the death of some lumbering brontosaurus in a sulphur swamp. He's a Luddite! The brontosaurus died because it couldn't adapt. We are adapting. Adapting to self-made problems that's just going round in ever-decreasing circles. Yes, and talking of back passages, oh, I want all of you to disappear along the one outside this door. Oh, go, out. go on, go on, out! Out, 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 out. This is my boiler room. It's going to stay that way. I've got my beans, I've got my hammock, I've got my job. I don't want anything else. Have they released the children? Uh, yes, I, I explained to the police. Uh, unfortunately, they're not going to arrest me, are they? I doubt it. Uh, in that case, I'm going home with Irene. Jack! Uh, headmaster? I don't suppose you would like to take over this school? Uh, no, thank you. Pity. I am going back to Comptage. There's still so much to be done. No, wait for me, Elizabeth. I'm coming with you. Elizabeth, wait for me. Alan, here are the keys. Go and open the car. Oh. Come on, Dad. Yes. yes. Come along, Headmaster. Yes, and good riddance to the lot of you. Uh. More glass to sweep up. Yeah, when term starts tomorrow, I could go upstairs and find tons of litter to pick up and hundreds of mucky toilets to clean. And despite what anybody says, I shall be in charge of the school. <laughs> In Almost Time for School by Gordon McCarrow, Poon was played by Andrew Sachs, Mr. Bliss by Robert Edison, Mrs. Dooley by Margot Boyd, Alan Knox by Mark Straker, and Jack Routh by John Rye. The voice of Comptich, Robin Summers, Miss Flood, Jane Knowles, Irene, Moya Leslie, The Policeman, Guy Holden, Patrick, Peter Aker, Nicholas, Christopher Douglas, May, Helena Breck, Andrea, Melinda Walker, Mrs. Hindemith, Eva Stewart, Mr. Elsted, Stephen Thorne, and Janet and John were played by Zoe Nathanson and Adam Smith. The play was directed by David Spencer. <laughs>